as you can see, I'm putting out my feeders today. Deer season's finally over, so it'll be easy to start training some dogs. These feeders work for coon and squirrel both, deer and everything else eating it up. If you just have an old junk tire on the rim like this, you can drill out some holes in it, fill the tire up with corn, and the rim will help weigh it down so it won't go anywhere. And since it's inside the tire, it'll help keep it a little bit drier longer, and that way deer won't be able to eat it up either. Once I get back to the house, I'll draw up a diagram how I do this, that way I can get the most out of this area. That way when I bring a young dog back here, I can cut them loose four different times without hunting the same area twice. A lot of people do this, and they put it right in the middle of the woods, so when they cut the dog loose, it runs in there right in that one spot, and that's all they get out of it. You can space these out better. That way you can position the dog to travel what's easiest through the woods, and it will maximize the amount of area you can use to hunt the dog. In this woods, I usually don't kill anything out of it either. Make sure the game population stay up. setup I like doing. Just a five gallon bucket with a lid with a hole cut out on it. It's a little bit harder for them to get into, which isn't necessarily a bad thing because it leaves more scent around it. I've actually had squirrels go in it and then when the dog runs up there to smell it, it comes out and they see it, which works even better. Just another way to keep the corn good longer without deer getting into it. All right, now I'm gonna show you guys how I set it up in the woods to get the most out of the area. That way you're not turning the dog loose and only getting one tree out of it, you can get four out of a good section. I'll draw out just the basic layout of this woods. It's pretty much just a big rectangle. Then it has a big swamp, kind of shaped like that running through it. So what usually happens when it's not baited is you'll cut a dog loose and it'll run right through the big part of the swamp which makes it really difficult. What I see a lot of guys do too is that if they're putting bait out to start training their young dogs is they'll put it out somewhere in the middle just put it out there where they see them so then you cut the dog loose and it'll run in there and it'll go into the middle of the woods and then you're only getting one good hot spot. What I like doing with this property is I'll put one bait station right here that way I can cut loose right here and the dog can run in a little ways and maybe ambush one or see it and if he trees it good and if not there's another bait station over here that he can run into best case scenario if he trees at this first one I have another bait station set down here so I can lead him off about 30, 40 yards this way, cut him loose and he goes another 100 yards is another really good spot you can run into another coon or squirrel depending on what I'm training the dog for. Then from there, I have another one set up on this side so you can do the same thing. That way I'm setting it up so where the dog is running is where it's the easiest to cross that swamp. So tr make one tree here or if it's a puppy and you're just wanting to walk around and do some basic obedience training in the woods, walk them around that hot spot, get them used to it, walk down here, walk to that one. You can cut them loose, you can kind of get the picture of what's going on here. That's about another two, 250 yards or so. Make another tree, then you can cut them loose again, come back. And what's nice about this too is if you go out earlier, they're not moving right away, you might get through the first one or two get to this back corner, come back here, tree one, and then on your way back, there might be one there waiting on you, and tree one there. So you're setting up movement for you and the dog to where it's most efficient time-wise for you. It's most efficient for the dog to get good spots, which is, makes training an inexperienced dog really easy. I don't like leaving a lot of variables when it comes to training dogs, so I try and set it up to make it as efficient as possible for me and for them. That way they don't do a bunch of stupid stuff and build bad habits. I like trying to make them as efficient as possible, make it almost robotic where you cut them loose. Cut them loose and they know when they're in the woods and they're running, they're looking for that scent, either a squirrel or a coon. 
in this woods, I don't kill any game, so it's got a lot of coon and a lot of squirrels in it. And remember, this is just for training young dogs. Puppies, inexperienced dogs. If you have to do this with an older dog to tree, a coon or a squirrel, there's something wrong. This is just a good way to feed the wildlife, have a good spot to take them to know where you have a high chance of running into one or at least having hot scent there. That way your time is actually spent training, not just walking around the woods watching the dog. Thanks for watching. There'll be more videos like this too as I start training dogs for people again. If you have any questions or want to see more videos like this related to a certain topic, just comment below and let me know. Thanks for watching.